Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Randall Woodfin, and I am here with Isaac Cooper. It's been a minute since I've been able to do a walk and talk with y'all, but we got a good conversation today. You know, usually how we chop this up is I, I do it um, solo, and we get into any any topic y'all want to on Q&A. But today, Isaac Cooper is here to talk to y'all about something that's really, really important, and that is securing your financial future. And so he leads his own organization called IMC um, Financial Consulting. He's gonna tell me if I, I, I botched that, but I want him to tell you a little bit more about who he is, a little of his background, and then the service they do and what they're trying to do on behalf of empowering people and families here in the community. So Isaac, brother, good to be with you this morning. Yes, really sir, appreciate brother. you, man. Yes, One, sir. There's no script, so say what you want to say, how you want to say it. First, tell the people who you are, a little bit about your background. Cool, Anything. cool, cool. Birmingham, what's happening? Uh, Isaac Cooper, um, I'm actually Jamaican by blood. 95% of my family is overseas. Uh, I was born in Florida, though. Uh, played football at Fort Worth Beach High School, so shout out 850. Uh, but a good man named Pat Sullivan brought me here to Birmingham. Football scholarship at Sanford University. Um, really fell in love with Birmingham afterwards. And to be honest, Mayor, you know this. You know, if it was up to me, I'd still be playing ball. I know. <laughs> I know, bro. Uh, injuries cut that short. And so I actually stumbled into the financial industry, uh, ended up working at the number one office in the country at a Fortune 100 company, but I was the only black in the state of Alabama. And so a few things came to light. I said, okay, I'm seeing all these individuals execute what it means to be able to build wealth, transfer wealth, protect wealth. But I'm the only one here that looks like me that's hearing this information. So if I'm the only one hearing it, who's out here sharing it? Right. And that triggered really a lot of the frustration in the financial industry when it pertains to not only black professionals, but the ability to be able to communicate to the co community in a way in which they can understand. Right. And so we launched IMC Financial Consultant in 2016. I got it right. It's, uh, yeah, you got, years, it. you got it, Five you got years. it, you got it. Uh, right. and, um, and it's been a joy. It, it's, it's truly been a joy because in our motto is every tax bracket needs a financial solution. Every tax bracket needs a financial professional, right? And it's not only people that have money that care about their family. And so what are we doing to equip, educate, but also encourage them to execute on some of the products, some of the tools, some of the techniques. And we see it right now just in the midst of the pandemic, right? right. Like not only individuals and households are dealing with not having access to capital or limited capital, it's businesses as well, right? And so everyone has had to adjust, evolve. So it's, it's, it's truly been an honor to be able to build this vision here in Birmingham because Birmingham is a community, right? Birmingham yeah. has been the representation of what community looks like, what change looks like. So it's been cool. So um, let's 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 unpack that a little. Before we dig deep into more of the service you provide and why this is important to the community, um, I think the community should know some of the service you provide to the community outside of this, the boards you sit on, yeah. uh, the things you do in the community. Uh, you live in the city, you love the city, like like right. literally Talk to them, build us up before we get to the impact you have with IMC. Let's do it. Yeah, we, um, my wife and I, shout out Deesh, my wife and I, we've been living on the west side in Inslee since 2015. Um, it's, you know, what's unique because we lived actually in, in Hoover for a couple of years, but it wasn't until we got to Inslee, I was like, we home now, right? This is home. Right. And throughout that, we wanted to make sure that our ecosystem supported that, where we go to the gym, where our office is in downtown Inslee. But then as well, when you, as you mentioned, I'm, I'm, it's a true honor. You don't understand how much of an honor it is to be the chairman of the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. Shout out to BCRI. Shout out to BCRI. Shout out to our interim president, Dewana Thompson. We are moving and grooving. But that has allowed me to be able to really get proximate to the heroes and sheroes like the Odessa Wool folks and get to be able yeah. to get the spirit of Birmingham. Yeah. That's been mo very fascinating. Now, adjusting throughout this pandemic hasn't been easy, right? So when you got your doors closed from March into October, that is gonna impact your revenue. So let me let me pause for a quick second and say, listen, y'all, you're a fan of the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. Now's a good opportunity to go online, show your love to the BCRI. Yeah. It is not, it does not belong to Isaac. It does not belong to me, the city of Birmingham. It belongs to us as a community, yep. and that is our institution, and we need to support it. 
And one of the best ways to support it is by supporting it with your dollars. So make a donation to the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. That's a quick plug. Keep going, brother. Yes, sir. BCRI.org if you were looking for the website. Um, but just through that organization, we've done a number of camps. I've been able to work with Next Level Football Camp. Uh, I would say over the last 10 years, right. free breakfast, free lunch, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's. We training these kids from the from the neck down, but they're getting training from the neck up. And I would say that was probably one of the most gratifying experiences because, you know, you may have over 500 kids at Legion Field, but unfortunately, 80% of the kids are being signed up. There's no man with them. Right. No father, no uncle, right? It's mom, grandma dropping them off. And so now we have them for four, five, six hours, and we can instill some of those principles that they don't see at the house, right? And, and <laughs> And even as simple as we've had kids come, and they said, man, the main reason why I came because I knew I was going to get fed. Right. So it's just all these different aspects of uh, community that we've been able to get involvement, uh, involved with, even on the board side, even on the professional side. And so uh, it's truly been an honor. And, and throughout that, just, you know, I say West Side's the best side, as Dr. <laughs> Hood would, would articulate. That's Anthony Hood. Yes, yeah, right. Uh, uh, Anthony C. Uh, Hood. So, my yeah, bad. yeah, you got to put Doc, the C in there. Dr. Hood. <laughs> <laughs> so, how about this? K through 12 does not teach me. It doesn't teach the current generation. Right. I don't even think it taught my parents' generation how to balance a checkbook. Mm. Yeah. K through 12 didn't necessarily teach us the importance of saving. Right. Um, it didn't teach us um, credit about credit. Yeah. Credit score. <laughs> how to get credit, anything of that nature. Right, right, right. We find ourselves, we get to college or we don't go to college. Mm. Either one, it doesn't matter. Right. We get a credit card, we run it up, we get in debt. Yep. We're in our early 20s. Yep. And we get to our 30s and 40s and we still don't know how to balance a checkbook. Right. We don't know how to get our credit score up. Right. We don't know how to purchase a home. We, yep. Don't, yep. we don't know how to secure our financial future because it was not taught to us. Right. Tell us how IMC gets down in the weeds yep. for an individual or a couple or a family and, and either get people to never go down that path or if they're on that path, get them off that path. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you hit it. Like literally walk us, unpack all that for us. Perfect. We start picking up financial habits by the age of three. And unfortunately, as you mentioned, K through 12, high, you know, high school, college, unless you have an example in your house that can talk to you about some of the things, like you said, credit, balancing your checkbook, your exposure is gonna be based off of the experience. And so one of the aspects about credit, sometimes when you have to learn about it, it's too late. Well, when you when you have to use it, it's too late, right? Because you needed to prepare yourself. So we ensure from an education standpoint that we can demystify some of these financial nuances, because unfortunately, you know, if you say budget, you'd be like, oh, that's easy. It's really not that easy. Right. If you say credit, oh, I, we have to say, OK, first, let's meet where you are. Let's take away the shame of not knowing it's not your fault. That's actually the first step is the mental aspect. Because unfortunately, you'll paralyze your ability to be able to want to learn and appetite to educate and execute because you feel like you should have already known that. Right. Now, at the education level, we, we come in, as you, as you mentioned, all of the clients that we work with, we don't do anything they don't understand. Until they can understand it, that's when we can apply it. So we get into the basis. All right, look, so those that are watching and you're saying, all right, I want to increase my financial future. I want to get better with my budget, I want to get better with my credit, better understanding of everything. First, let's look at what you've been doing. Let's pull the last two months of your statements, three months of your statements. Let's look at uh, all the different transactions. Where your money statements show I eat out too much. Hey, hey. And, and, that's, and that's a good observation. Now that we're aware of that, how do we adjust it? So eating out, dining out, I actually just got done meeting with a client. <laughs> and we got to modify the dining out budget, right? You know, the Chick-fil-A's been door dashing, grub hugging, you know, and, and how do you adjust that? All right. One thing about money is that there is emotions tied to those decisions. Right. So even for myself, if I want to have a great experience with my wife, it's going to cost money. 
and we want to continue to have good experiences. Right. So we have to address the emotions before the experience. And the way you do that is saying, okay, if I'm looking to modify my budget on eating out, let's say it's 500 a month and I need it down to 250 a month. We may want to use cash now versus a debit or credit card. Right. Because once you get done spending the cash, money's out, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. a level of accountability is going to be necessary. But at some point, you're going to have to sit down and say, okay, one, where has my money gone? Two, if I keep spending money that way, will I be able to get A, B, C done in the future? That may be traveling, maybe saving for the future, maybe saying, all right, at some point I want to say, I don't want to work anymore. Do I have the awareness of my situation to be able to make that assessment? And then do I have the ability to make the adjustments to accomplish those goals and objectives? I hope y'all hear what the brother's saying. Um, and look, I need to check my phone because y'all may have some questions by now, but definitely, definitely important. Keep going, brother, because I want to make sure these folk understand you provide life skills right now, and we need to all understand it. Even if we already know it, some of us need a refresher course, yeah. so keep going. Fi and, and, and keep in mind, financial literacy is just not for poor people, right? Financial education is just not for those that have less resources. Right. It's at every level. Right. We got clients that make <coughs> millions of dollars a year. You know what we're talking about? Budget, cash flow, credit, right? Because your cash is your oxygen. They used to say cash is king. Nah, cash flow is king, right? And so when you think about a household what is the best way for us to be able to, one, identify what is the necessities? Of course, rent or mortgage, utilities, food, right, the insurance, some of the things that has to come out a month. After that, what are the variable expenses that impact my ability to breathe? Again, we're, just, we're gonna speak about cash as oxygen. That impacts my ability to breathe. And if that is suffocating your ability to set money aside for the future, then we need to see, really talk about what's the future. What is the future? So from there, that assessment, this environment to learn, because you have financial literacy is really your ability to understand financial terms. Financial education gives you that framework to get deeper with that term. Once you get those two elements in place, now we got to see how does money make you feel? That's when financial wellness comes into play. Then you start leveraging that information, leveraging the literacy that you've been able to uh, gather now we got to put together a financial plan, right? And with that financial game plan, it is not to say this is what's going to happen. That gives you a framework to say if anything changes, a pandemic, you lose your job, it gives you a framework to say these are the priorities that we've established. If anything happens, we can make sure that we maintain these priorities and not lose our trajectory within this change. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that, bro? Look, by the way, we're going to keep talking, but if I'm listening to you, and I'm like, this brother deep, he's preaching, but I need more, I need more than this. Yep. I need more than this talk. Yep. How can they find you? How can they get a hold of your service? Of course, our website, www.planningplanningimc.com. And I'm gonna give you a few tangible things, all right? I'm looking to get better with my credit. Download the app called CreditWise. It's through Capital One, it's free. It allows you to be able to see what's on your credit. There's no inquiries, no soft or hard inquiries. You could see what's on your credit, address anything that's in collections. What I love about it is that you, if you have anything in collections, contact information right there. Let me go in and call them and address that. Budget, you have an app called, uh, um, uh, oh my goodness, I don't forgot the budgeting app. I'm gonna so, come back to that. Yeah, take your time. You got your budgeting app. Cool. But worst case scenario, Write down your income, write down your expenses, right? And let's make sure that there is a, a difference there. Um, when we think about increasing your credit, there's an app called Self. It actually re reports to the three credit bureaus, $25 a month, $50 a month. You can start setting money aside and ultimately establish a secure credit card. But I've seen clients, <laughs> their credit score increase 40 to 50 points within a couple of months. That's short, that's short and fast. Short and fast and, that's a and big increase. Easy. Mayor, you know this 700 credit score communities don't riot. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let y'all unpack that later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got credit, credit wise, make sure you download that app. If you say, all right, you mentioned something about money for the future, investments, Investopedia. Set up an account with Investopedia. It is free. It is not to invest, it's to learn. They send definitions every single day you have the ability to actually set up a simulator. So you can invite friends in your community, folks that you work with, hey look, 
I don't know much about this investing, but this thing says we have $100,000 that we can invest. It tracks with the stock market. We could pick stocks and mutual funds. Let me use this. Let me dip my foot in the pool and not necessarily get it wet. That's a good way to get proximate because a lot of this stuff is really rooted in your ability to understand it. <sighs> There's a lot of jargon folks out here that's not professionals, that's not licensed talking about finances, but it's really rooted in your ability to know your information, know your, know your situation, but then educate yourself on how to change it based off of your overall goals and objectives. So earlier, and we're gonna probably turn around in a minute, Bet. earlier you mentioned um, the emotional aspect of this. Yeah. Talk to me about the, the mindset and the mentality too. So in Birmingham, there is, there's, there are, there's poor, there's working poor, there's yeah. working class, mm. middle class. Yeah. You can go on and on, but you on and on, you get outside of the city limits of Birmingham. Right. How do we, how do we unpack folk who are working poor and they're spinning their wheels but they they want to change right like yeah and when i say change they they do the right thing right they pay yep. the bills yeah they take care of their family but how do we how do we get them out of a cycle that they don't want to be in mm -hmm. um and so if i in that situation i come to you unpack how what are my steps that's a what's great. my direction what's what do I need to do? Great question. You, you, you really hit it off um, just by mentioning the psychology behind it, right? Like, first we have to address your mindset, right? But those that essentially, as they say, you may have more month than you have money, right? So it's the 23rd of the month and you're like, man, I got $200 to my name. How am I, how am I gonna get through this? I would say reach out to our financial navigators. That's one of the things we've been able to partner on because- Yeah, we're definitely gonna talk about that in a minute. 90% of the residents that we've been able to help thus far make less than $35,000. Right? 30% were unemployed. And they had the ability to speak with a professional, get them access to resources, the different assistance and the programs that, that exist. But have someone say, all right, first of all, I care. Because right. when you talk about finances and when you have limited finances, it's tough to talk to someone that you're like, man, I ain't finna tell them I ain't got no money. What's, what's the point? Like, what, what's the point what, of me? What you gonna do for me? Right. Yeah. But right. I'm gonna embarrass myself. Right, yeah. right. But it's actually courageous. I salute anyone that has the ability to be transparent with someone and talk about their financial situation because what you're telling me is that my current situation is not gonna remain the same. And in order for me to do that, if I wanna uh, provide for my kids, if I wanna, uh, if, it's, it's the, if it's the future of their education or if it's just the fact that I wanna make more money, I need more oxygen, right, throughout the month, that's a courageous conversation. So just to re put some emphasis, y'all, on what he said, it is hard if you are in a current financial situation that that you don't like or it's, it takes courage to talk about that to a financial advisor or financial consultant um, because it, it makes you vulnerable. It opens you up. But at the same time, what he's saying is if you do that, the commitment you're personally making to yourself is that you don't want to remain in that space. Yeah. So I'll be vulnerable with you. I'll be vulnerable with the public. I, um, first time in life, uh, I got some assistance from the HOPE program last year. So by definition, I had a financial advisor. Uh, they partnered with the city of Birmingham. They provided the service. And even in my position as mayor, I took advantage of the opportunity. And the conversation around financial literacy. Yep, yep. yep. Conversation around budgeting. Um, what are my priorities? Yep. Conversation around my credit score. Yep. I'm a renter. Do I want to be a homeowner? What do I need to do? All these things. It's important. So remember, if these things are on your mind and you want to get better, it is okay to reach out to somebody like Isaac Cooper. So again, it's a good time to give them a plug. Tell them, to tell them how to get in contact with you. Of course. Our website, www.planningimc.com. If you want to reach out to one of our financial navigators, 205-259-7836. You call that number, you'll get immediate direction. And you'll have one of our financial professionals reach out to you directly. Give me that number one more time, brother. 205-259-7836. And keep in mind, even in the midst of this pandemic, you know, a majority of the residents that I'm thinking about, there's actually resources out there that's coming your way. The child tax credit. Yeah. That's going to start in July. Making sure that you're bankable 
right? Folks are out there waiting on, still waiting on their stimmies. <laughs> still waiting, bro. Still waiting on their stimmies because they got to get mailed to them. So even if you got Cash App, you actually have a bank. So we need to update your information to make sure that these child tax credits come in, again, any age under six, and if you receive the stimulus check, nine times out of 10, you qualify. You're gonna get 200, no, excuse me, $300 a month per child, starting in July. And then once you file your taxes, fifteen to $1,800 per child until December, right? Oh, bank. Earned income tax credit, making sure you have your taxes and stuff squared away. So there's a lot of money out there right now for those that I'm speaking to, but you, we have to get your framework in place. We gotta make sure you're bankable. We have to make sure your documents are in order. But all of this is gonna be driven off of what you want. The last thing you do, if, if something is wrong with your car, you're not gonna pull up to the mechanic and say, hey, something wrong with my car, but don't pop my hood. I gotta pop the hood and see what's going on so we can get you back on the road, right? And so even in that moment of being vulnerable, that vulnerable moment is gonna expose us on how we can empower you, educate you. And then you walk up out of there like, ah, I'm good, right? And so, but again, on the road. unfortunately, the financial industry, and this is my frustration with the financial industry, is that it's been built to only provide financial professionals for those that only have money. There's two metrics that dictate someone's really financial uh, uh, success as a professional. Assets under management, or how many insurance products you sold, right? Nah, nah, uh-uh. The metric needs to be, were you able to move their situation regardless of income? Because once we focus on that, then it's less about what you can do for my pocket in regards to the professional, but what can I do for that person? Right. So that's why we're so committed about even our FLEA curriculum, financial literacy, entrepreneurship, and education. We've been able to partner with different initiatives, different programs, the Dannon Project, one included, um, and, and, and provide that insight and information because, again, you know, the, the financial literacy, financial education is thrown out, but it, it's, it's not necessarily, it's a lifestyle. Right? Like, in order to maintain what you just learned, you're gonna have to make lifestyle decisions. You're gonna have to move a little different, right? right? And so, but if you know you're sacrificing those decisions for the future, for your family, cooking with grace. Good change. So, everybody, you should know the city of Birmingham actually partnered with IMC. You wanna tell them about how that how that partnership's been, the service that's been provided? Yeah, man, we, we've been able to, this is, uh, Probably, th this, this work here is legacy work. This research, this, this service is gonna outlive everyone here. I know that for a fact. So we were able to partner with Cities for Financial Empowerment uh, out in New York. Um, they work with municipalities to establish financial empowerment initiatives, but also in the midst of the pandemic, we were able to partner and receive proceeds to establish this financial navigator program. And that number that I shared earlier, 205-259-7836, that will now give you access to a professional to help navigate. Hey, and we have some, uh, I believe there's a town hall coming up about the rent and utility assistance. Tonight. What do I need to do to be prepared? There will be a contact information. We'll send that information over. Send the contact information for those uh, organizations. Utility assistance, JCCEO, United Way, Salvation Army. What is it that I need, right? I lost my job in October. I haven't been able to pay rent. I haven't been able to maintain my utilities. How do I navigate the situation? Even, hey, I'm still waiting on my stimulus. They said I can update my payment information on my address. What is the website? Just to be able to speak to a professional. I, I'm, I don't want to get too emotional, but even to those that they get off the phone and before they get off the phone and say, thank you, I just needed to speak to someone. I just needed to speak to someone, right? And provide that peace of mind. And so this is, to me, this is God's work. You know, this is, this is the type of work in which we see uh, we know we need because if we have a healthy house, we have a healthy community, right? And so if there is any type of uh, riff or, or frustration or just you, you feel like you're limited and you need someone to speak to outside of family members, 205-259-7836. So this conversation reminds me that around the conversation of financial literacy, around budgeting, around planning, around your credit score, around credit period, access yep. to capital, uh, whether you want to be a renter or have a mortgage and buy a home, 
Doesn't matter if you're single or have a family. Yep. It's never too late. Yep. All right. As a point, I'm going to overstress. It's never too late to get help in this conversation topic, but mainly y'all feel empowered. That's what this brother's speaking to. IMC uh, Financial Consulting is really about empowering you, the individual, the family on your financing. So anything, anything you want to share in closing with this audience, speak game to them, um, give them your information again, just anything you want to say to close them out. Because today, y'all, it was important that you share this with y'all. We've never done this style before, but I kind of like it. Yeah. I'm glad you were um, first to kick it off, but because this conversation has been empowering. So hit them. Most Just definitely. literally hit them. Yeah. <laughs> Birmingham, at the end of the day, financial literacy is just not for poor people, right? I want you to take away, all right, let me look at my situation. Let me spend some time and just slow down. We have all these responsibilities where we work on a day-to-day -day basis, but sometimes we need to make sure our money is working for ourselves with that same amount of effort. So as we look to make changes, as you look to get guidance, 205-259-7836, that's specifically for our Financial Navigator program. You may say, all right, Isaac, I'm, I'm, I'm making a little bit of money. You know, I may be a physician, I may be a doctor, I may, you know, uh, be an attorney. See, I, need to, I still need to speak with someone. Hit our website up, www.planningimc.com. This financial, really, movement is not just one decision. It's a continuous decision to make sure that whatever my goals and objectives are is not going to outweigh the uncomfortable feeling that I may have just by looking at my financial picture. So, again, it's really an honor, Mayor, yeah, to man. be able to join you, brother. You yeah. know, and we're going to keep doing yeah. the work. So, big ups. Shout out to Isaac. IMC, your team, what y'all do. I've known you for a long time, brother. I've yes, always sir. been impressed by you. Um, shout out old days at Urban <laughs> Standard, both of our front office. That's right. <laughs> um, but real talk, everybody, it doesn't matter if you are an hourly worker. It doesn't matter if you are on salary. It does not matter if you are a city employee in the lane of, um, on the back of a uh, refuge truck or public works employee, or you in the financial, in the finance department, or a police officer, or a firefighter. Isaac's program is for you as a citizen now here. If you're not a city employee, you need help. His program is for you. Yeah. Take advantage, y'all. Yeah. Uh, feel empowered. Um, don't be embarrassed. If there's ever a conversation where you need to be vulnerable to get to where you want to be, this is it. Shout out to everybody. Love y'all. See you soon. Enjoy your Thursday, everybody. Be safe.